Uh, my name is Serkan Girgin. I am from University of Defense, uh, Faculty of Geoinformation Science and Earth Observation, uh, usually known as ITC. Um, probably uh, some of you are also working in academia or similar institutions where you need to work with non-technical uh, people and uh, do some, some uh, geospatial tasks with them. This is something we quite frequently do uh, at our faculty. Uh, more specifically, we are involved in different citizen science activities and also we are working with, with children uh, from the secondary uh, education uh, level. And um, we are using different tools, actually, uh, to, uh, to, to facilitate um, them to use the geospatial um, um, methods. Um, but at one point, uh, we start to think, okay, uh, QGIS is really a very nice uh, GIS software, but maybe we can also um, make it possible uh, for them to use also QGIS. Um, but for that purpose, we had to simplify it a little bit. So uh, today, basically, I will uh, talk about our journey while trying to uh, simplify QGIS and where we came right now, hopefully with some future work coming afterwards. Um, QGIS, the new website, which we learned a lot actually today, has a very nice motto, special visualization and decision-making tools for, for everyone. And it is really literally everyone because it's an open and free software and it enables everybody interested to, to use the GIS technology. Um, but in fact, when we look at the user interface, to be honest, it's a little bit rather complex for certain user groups. The user interface that we like with lots of toolboxes, uh, tool, tool buttons, panels, and lots of functionality is very good if you are really expert on the topic. But in fact, for, uh, for, for, for children around 12, 13 years old or elderly people are taking part in the uh, citizen science activities, if um, they, 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 their experience with um, software applications is limited, then it is a little bit complicated. Of course, our target group is not babies at this age. More specifically, actually, um, our, our target was the secondary ed education so that we enable them to explore real world data sets, analyze spatial relationships and create maps that can enhance their understanding as a support to, to the courses that they take, but also as, as additional activities that they are doing, like citizen science, which is becoming more and more uh, common. Um, and in, in that kind of activities, in fact, mapping environmental features, monitoring habitats, and contributing to scientific research uh, is, is something that has been done for, for a while now. Of course, it is not only these user groups. So in higher education, uh, sometimes we have people in different backgrounds. Some of them are not technical. They are using GIS technology, but only at a limited extent. And for those kind of people also, having a simplified interface can, can be useful. And maybe you can name more very easily, also from, from your companies or institutions. Our aim with this study was, in fact, um, uh, to, uh, to help these non-technical people, because right now they are taking a part in these activities, but mainly to collect the data. So they are not actively taking part in data analysis and evaluation. So we call it citizen science, but it is more citizen data collection, to be honest. So. Um, and usually they do this kind of data collection through dedicated applications, most of which are working on, on the web, and they have custom designed interfaces, and the data analysis and evaluation is mainly done by, by experts, most of the time the researchers. So a simplified QGIS interface can lower the barrier, lower the barrier in using advanced tools without losing the ad advantages of uh, the powerful GIS software that we have, and in fact, it can be a kind of stepping stone for the use of standard QGIS interface at a later stage. So students who are in the secondary education, if they start to use QGIS at that age, probably they will become lifetime Q QGIS users at a later stage, which will enable the community growth, actually, for, for QGIS. Um, in, in the morning, John, Johannes um, Kroger actually had a very nice uh, presentation about installation of QGIS and customization. There, uh, he, he mentioned a little bit more, more, more details, but in fact, QGIS user interface is uh, customizable. So basically, you can move the toolbars, you can move the panels, you can turn on and off, um, you can change the, the fonts, icon size, uh, and there is a specific interface customization option which allows you to disable certain uh, uh, components of, of QGIS 
which means actually that the functionality is also becomes inaccessible. Um, and then you can store them under user profiles. Um, but unfortunately, this doesn't allow you to, uh, to shuffle the components that you have. So you cannot take one uh, tool button from one toolbar and move it somewhere else, or you cannot regroup the, the menus to make them a little bit more uh, streamlined to, to use. That's unfortunately not possible. There is a, a plugin called Customize Toolbars, which allows you to create new, new toolbars. You can put the tools that you want there. Uh, even you can use uh, some processing algorithms and you can put them on, on, on the toolbar. Uh, but you can only edit the new toolbar state you create. So it's not possible to modify the existing ones. And it is not possible to create a drop down tools, which means a button when you click, it provides a menu from which you can access additional features, which is very useful if you want to uh, simplify the interface, make it more compact. Um, to, to do the simplification work, of course, you need to draw the boundaries. Huh? Depending on uh, different needs, you may have different constraints. And in our case, we try to set the constraints as, as listed on the slide. So basically, based on our target groups, we said they will be using local files or connect to remote services through, through, web, through remote data stores through web services, but no database access. They will deal with mainly 2D vector and raster data, so uh, no uh, 3D uh, data or no time series. Um, they have the basic knowledge. Uh, of reference systems. This is something we educate them for. So that means they can set one if necessary, they can reproject the data, but they will work always with a single map. So they won't use multiple views at the same time. Also, the idea is to, to work them interactively on the, on the computer. So no printing, no layouts, uh, no advanced tools, also model building, because these are quite advanced things uh, to explain and to learn, but they will need Two additional things. One is to access base maps directly so that they can visualize the data that they have and then be able to uh, create some uh, plots, histograms, uh, scatter plots, and, and similar. So um, in order to, to decide what to do, we, we, we looked all the QGIS components and features uh, in a detailed way. So we checked all the menus, toolbars, panels, and uh, processing algorithms, and we tried to identify the ones that are non-essential, at least for, for our purpose. We also checked the alternative versions that are provided by QGIS, and we identified the simple ones, uh, if there are more than one option available. And also, we tried to uh, group the essential components, uh, considering better usability constraints. So, um, just a disclaimer. So, eventually, we are researchers. We are not usability experts or UI designers, so eventually our evaluation is rather subjective, but uh, I think it is quite uh, representative uh, of the needs of secondary education and citizen science activities. Uh, based on these constraints, we removed actually some tools to, to make it simple. So no SQL functions, no SMD uh, functions, um, mesh, GPS, cartography functions, because we checked all of them and none were needed, to, to be honest. And the, when I talk about this, these are not uh, the, the core features of QGIS. These are the ones that are provided by the processing algorithm. So um, eventually, we, we didn't remove the styling, but we removed some additional components linked to, to cartography. Uh, also, we disabled some, some extensions like GRASS or PDAL, because uh, plot, point clouds are also a kind of an advanced topics. And there were also some uh, advanced uh, geometries like curves, which are not very much in, in use. Or let's say it is also not supported by QGIS in a standard way. So some tools support curves, some others they don't. So it becomes a kind of confusing for, uh, for basic users. Um, as I mentioned, we needed some additional uh, features. So uh, we included uh, some uh, extensions for that purpose. In order to enable plotting, we replaced plotting functions with uh, data plotly extension. Uh, and the main reason is uh, the plotting functions that are available in QGIS are rather static. So you get a plot, but you cannot modify. You cannot modify the color of the points. You cannot modify the legend. It's not possible. So these extensions allows you to do it. It's also interactive and dynamic. You select features, the graph gets automatically updated. So we find it quite, quite useful. 
And also it removes the need to open an external file because when you create a plot, most of the time you get a link to, to, to a file which you need to click to, to access, so, which is a little bit not very uh, straightforward for, for young children. And for base maps, we provided quick map services, which enables actually access to lots of base maps. So uh, at the end, uh, we reached a point where we made QGIS a little bit simple. So uh, there's no menu bar. So we checked everything, and it looks like it's possible to remove all menus. So we removed them completely. Uh, there are less toolbars. We, we reduced the number of toolbars into two. There is one uh, toolbar at the top with the basic functionality and one on the, on the left with editing functions. So they are also uh, uh, grouped based on, on the functionality. There are less panels. So most of the panels are, are, are removed. Uh, and in fact, we fixed the panels and toolbars. So normally you can, you can move them, you can drag and drop somewhere else, but basically sometimes it's really difficult to tell uh, children uh, click the sidebar on the, on the left, and then sometimes you get the answer, but I don't see a panel on the left because they played it and it's somewhere else. So uh, it is much more easy if we fix the things. So it really simplifies and it makes the communication and, and part education much more easy. So that's why we, we choose that, that way. We removed the processing toolbox. So there is also no processing toolbox. All the functionality is, is converted into drop-down uh, tool buttons. So there are less core features, but as I mentioned, there are some additional useful features added. Uh, it will be available on this GitHub repository. My hope was to make it available right now, but uh, unfortunately, it was a kind of last minute uh, development effort, so it will be available in, in the coming hours or, or days, so, but surely before the end of the week. Let me very uh, quickly show you uh, how it looks like. <clears throat> uh, so this is the simplified version of, of QGIS. Uh, as I mentioned, there are two toolbars. Uh, we grouped um, data uh, adding functionality or new layer uh, creation. We converted into drop-down boxes so that they, they don't occupy too much space. Uh, we moved this uh, adding base maps just, just next to them so that anything that is linked to uh, layers are close to each other. We grouped the zooming functionality and panning functionality. We converted them into drop-down boxes, which really also saved a lot of, a lot of space. Uh, so the, the drawing part uh, is a sidebar. Uh, it is really nice because you can, you can modify many parameters and there are also more options available. The good thing is the graph is created uh, on spot. So basically, if you choose the, uh, the layer and, and the fields, and if you click the Create uh, Plot button, uh, then the plot is, is there, it's visible, it's, it's dynamic, so it's really uh, quite easy to use. Uh, all the functionality of the toolboxes are moved to, to buttons, which normally suppose the work. I'm really sorry for this. <laughs> Normally, there is a drop down. Uh, and, and under the drop down, basically, we put all the, all the functionality. So, a buffer, a clip, clipping, uh, uh, raster related operations, uh, filling no data values, et cetera. All this functionality is, in fact, under a single, single menu, which is very easy to use. Um, and once you start editing, then basically, you, you can also uh, use the left menu to the to do the editing operations. Um, basically, this is how it works. So uh, it, I think it is really easy to, to explain and partly uh, easy to, to use as well. So uh, I will be here also tomorrow. I will be happy to show you also in detail without these time, time constraints. So now back to the presentation. So as I mentioned, um, while doing this work, actually, we had also some lessons learned, and um, maybe they are also equally important as providing a simplified user interface. So that's why I want to very briefly tell also uh, some points, some observations that we had regarding usability and user-friendliness. 
One thing is the terminology uh, used in, in QGIS. So uh, there are many different uh, words that are used to, to explain the same thing, create, calculate, compute. So um, it, maybe it's better to, to have a fixed terminology, which will help also with the documentation. Some tools perform similar tasks with different geometries. So convert geometry type, polygonize, lines to polygons, they are all uh, geometry transformation functions. They, they are the same thing, actually. But for that, we have all these different tools. Um, having different tools, of course, is not, not something very bad. But the problem is the, the tools, they don't have a standard approach uh, sometimes. So for example, we will duplicate by attribute tool. It also duplicate records to be saved as a, as a separate file. And there is a very similar one, which is called remove duplicate geometries. So it only removes ge geometries. It doesn't allow that. Um, likewise, extend to layer tool supports different type of extents, but cannot form, form a rounding operation. Whereas polygon from layer extent, which is actually also quite similar tool, it supports only one layer, but can perform rounding operations. So <clears throat> a, maybe a streamlined approach could be, could be really useful. And um, something which also brings a little bit uh, fuzziness is, is, is the tools that are named as, 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 as the same or very similar, like field no data. Uh, and if you use the GDAL version of field no data, it fills the no data values by interpolation. So you cannot fix a value. If you want to fix a, a, fix a value, you need to use field no data cells tool, which is a native, native one. Um, the, the tools which, which have the same names actually have also different options that are available. Uh, usually the GDAL tools, they provide more options compared to native tools, which can be something nice for expert users. In our case, that's arguable. We, we want to simplify, so maybe simplified versions are better, but eventually maybe reducing down to a single tool can be really useful. Some tools are designed mainly to be used by model builder. Uh, th this is very clear because uh, there is a, a tool called drop fields, which normally I think you don't use by itself except you, you, you make it part of a, of a model that you have because the same functionality can be easily done by using the attributes table. Um, and there are some tools uh, which are only required because the raster calculator doesn't have that capability, which is very simple, a rounding decimal numbers. It can be added to the, to the raster calculator easily, actually, and I think it will speed up the thing significantly. Um, there are also some tools which do the same thing, exactly the same thing, but um, but the changing is the number of layers that are uh, taken into consideration. So difference tool works only with two layers. There is difference multiple. It considers multiple layers at the same time. So basically, difference is just a subset of, of the other, other tool. Um, GDAL tools, unfortunately, do not provide any help content. This I find very interesting. So on the left-hand side, you see the aspect tool, which is a GDAL tool on the right hand side you see the native aspect tool the native one has has the has the documentation uh, whereas the gdal doesn't although the documentation has complete information that is available about the tool so it's just taking the, this data and putting into into help so that you can you can have it in place and similarly in some uh, cases the native tools they they also don't provide um, detailed information, it's only one sentence, although there is a lot of information available for each parameters in the, in the documentation. So this seems to be maybe not very much important, but in fact, I think if we try to help people to use QGIS, this becomes really, really something important. Um, okay, so there are things like this. I just uh, want to move, move, move forward, not to take some time. But the last thing about these external files, so there are several tools which I think are important, like plotting tools or statistical tools. We, we, we would be very happy to use the existing tools, but uh, just providing a link to external file where there is no guarantee that the user can access the file because it really depends on the settings of your, your machine. I think it's not very user-friendly way of providing access to, to the outputs. So eventually, um, I think having a critical look at the existing user interface elements and streamlining a refined and standardized user experience might be really beneficial for QGIS. Uh, and this will definitely facilitate initiatives like simplification that we do. But probably it will be also useful for everyone.
in the community. So we have some feature work. So one is the installation, so find an easy way so that the students, they don't need to install QGIS and R uh, extension separately. So this is something we are working on. Simplification of processing tool dialogues is also uh, another, another thing that we are, we are trying to do. So this, these dialogues are very nice, but they have lots of additional tools that are provided. Sometimes they function, sometimes they don't. So we aim to remove all of them so that everything becomes much more simplified. And finally, to provide a little bit more help content. So this is basically what we did. So um, if you have just two minutes, uh, I will be very happy if you can scan the Mentimeter. And uh, there are two questions. Basically, the first one is, um, what other features of QGIS do you think can be simplified? Because these are the ones that we found, but maybe you are aware, or maybe you are part of that, such an initiative. And, and the second one is uh, how to simplify also. So if you have some ideas about how things can be simplified, we will be very happy to hear about it. Okay, thank you for the presentation. And are there any questions? Well, there is this a GitHub repository, so the code will be there, and then it will be possible to install it directly from there. Mm, they don't provide any data to be. What do you mean with data? Yes. No, 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 no. It's it's just the standard QGIS that you have it locally installed. We only simplify the interface, so we don't collect any data. So it is just uh, just the QGIS as we know. We only modify the how it uh, how it looks like. So that's it. No, we are working with them. So basically, we have we have we have many different projects where we have uh, secondary uh, uh, school uh, students are are taking part. Uh, similarly, we have also many projects uh, where we have citizen science approach. That means people are helping to to collect the data. And as I mentioned, we want to make move it one one step further. So we really want them to be able to to touch the data, to analyze the data, and uh, provide some some of their feedback about it, which is for the time being lacking. I'm sorry, I'm just curious because we are work, working also with the secondary uh, level, yes. secondary education. So can you, can you mention a few use cases w uh, for what they use uh, the QGIS, the students? They are, they, so basically they cannot use it. That's why we did the simplification. So right now they are using web-based applications most of the time, or sometimes even Excel and similar, similar tools. Um, so, but they cannot use QJS, and we want to change this. We want them to be able to use QJS. Thank you. It was very interesting for me as well. Uh, I think it's also uh, usable internally in a company, for example. Uh, in our example, I, we have like about uh, 30 users in our company uh, dealing with QGIS, but on different levels, of course. And I could imagine um, such a simplified version of QGIS for, I don't know, 60% of the users, let's say. Yes. And my question would be, um, are you also providing services to kind of like um, tailor um, this service to, to uh, certain needs, uh, like the, to the company profile? Um, because it's, this is very good what you just showed, it's very general. Yes. And we are specializing in forestry, agriculture, for yes. example. Yes, yeah, I can imagine. Mm. So eventually, um, yeah, this is an open open source initiative. So we, we want to also right. get involved with the community. So um, if you open issue request on the re repository and explain your use case, we will be happy to help you and probably other people can. So um, 
this this uh, experiment I will call also was a kind of nice learning experience for us. So now we have a better understanding also how the QGIS user interface works, how the QT works. We are not experts, and I, I'm pretty sure here we have expert developers for the things for which we spent two days. Maybe they can solve it in two two minutes. So I really have high hopes that the committee will take um, and and help us to to build it further. Hi, thank you. It was really, uh, really nice to. Um, did you did you consider, um, for example, making uh, different um, uh, different setups for different projects? Mm. So that if you do a data collection project, you go to uh, through, for example, uh, um, your first setup. But if you do more analytic or or something else, you go to another. Yes. So. Um we didn't explore that, that options, but I can imagine, for example, if you are also in, in, interested in point clouds and if you want to provide a training about point clouds, then you don't need also the other functionality. So it might be possible to simplify the interface only for that purpose. So I think it's very, very much doable. That's why actually uh, I, I mentioned, um, I think it could be really nice if, if we all together uh, think about a kind of st streamlined approach about uh, QGIS user interface and the functionality that we provide. Maybe some basic uh, uh, updates or improvements about the, the, uh, the functions that are available for customization may enable everybody to customize something like this, which is unfortunately right now not possible, even if you use extensions, because um, they, are, they, they don't provide the same functions. So you really need to do some, some coding. But we can change this. Um, one thing also I want to uh, highlight uh, is the help because one difficulty that we have right now, so because we have a simplified interface, providing link to actual help pages uh, creates confusion because they, they are complete help, so they provide everything. So one a kind of research problem that we have right now is how we can take the existing documentation and simplify it in such a way that we can do it in an automated manner uh, to match with the features that we provide, so that providing help, we really bring a uh, tailored help system. So if you are familiar with, with um, pr providing help uh, for, for QGIS and, and basically the infra infrastructure that's available for it, we will be very happy to talk with you and uh, learn about your experience so that we can, we can find a way to do it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.